next talk is uh, by Joachim Klein, uh, and it's, uh, he's going to talk about ensuring the reliability of your model checker interval iteration for Markov decision processes. Thank you. This is joint work with Christel Bayer, Linda Leuschner, and Sasha Wunderlich in my group at Dresden, and with Dave Parker, the main developer of the probabilistic model checker PRISM. Um, to start, I, I would like to show you some curious results uh, from, from uh, probabilistic model checkers in practice for a relatively simple uh, Markov chain model um, and computing very simple uh, reachability probability where the result is one half. And um, MRMC provides a result of zero. And PRISM gets a little bit closer, but still quite far off, and uh, ISCAS MC gets close. Um, however, the underlying algorithms all these tools use are the same, and the differences in the result are mainly due to the default settings how, uh, what, uh, about the precision pr per parameters. So, so um, if you change that, you get similar results uh, for the different model checkers. And uh, especially, you can just uh, make the Markov chain a little bit bigger to also get uh, catastrophically uh, imprecise results from ISCAS MC. Um, so what's the problem? It's in the detection of convergence and value iteration. Um, let me give you a little bit of background. Uh, we are interested, as I said, in computing reachability probabilities uh, in Markov chains. So we have uh, a probabilistic transition function uh, and in MDPs where we have additionally non-deterministic choices. So uh, for MDPs, we have to quantify over all the different resolutions uh, of the non-deterministic choices. And we're also going to, to see uh, uh, the computation of expected reward uh, until reaching some goal. Um, uh, for this here, we annotate states with a reward that is earned when you visit this state. So each time you visit the state, you get this reward. Um, the, the computation amounts uh, basically to the solving of a linear equation system for DTMCs and to solving a linear program for MDPs. And in practice, because of the size of the models that are uh, typically involved, um, approximative iterative approaches are used instead of computing exact solution. Um, and uh, this is done by, by taking a vector of values for each state and then initializing it appropriately and then uh, iteratively updating the values according to a fixed point operator. So for probabilities and DTMCs, you, uh, uh, and you want to compute the, value, uh, the next value for some state, you look at the post, uh, uh, um, yeah, the, the, uh, the, the states that are reachable from this state and uh, look at the values and multiply it with the uh, transition uh, probabilities and you get a new updated value. Um, for MDPs, you have to additionally do the uh, quantification over the non-deterministic choices, and for rewards, you have to take them into account as well. Um, and uh, one can plot this, and then for here, for a quite uh, simple uh, Markov chain, uh, we see the different convergence of the, uh, for, for, for the different states. And what appears here as a straight line is actually still uh, converging on the real results, so they're a little bit uh, going nearer and nearer to the real, uh, real results. And then the question becomes, how do we detect convergence? So when are we sure we can stop? And um, in practice, what is used and implemented in the model checkers is uh, a comparison between the previous and the new vector. And you look at each uh, um, element for each state, and if the difference is smaller than a certain user-defined uh, precision parameter, uh, you terminate. So for example, if you use uh, an epsilon of 10 to the power of minus, minus 6, um, you terminate when the first six fractional digits in your, uh, uh, in your uh, elements uh, match. There's a, a variant, a relative comparison. Basically, you scale the uh, comparison by the magnitude of the of the values, and uh, this has the effect that if you have values that are less than one, uh, you get more precision. Basically, you get here for uh, minus six, you get six significant digits, so you uh, ignore the first uh, zeros here. 
And for, for larger values that uh, occur when you do uh, reward computations, um, you only consider the first six digits. So, so you get better precision for the smaller um, values and, and uh, less uh, precision for the larger ones. And it's known that this doesn't provide guarantees, this termination, uh, that, that you are uh, actually, uh, th that there's, uh, that you've actually converged on the real result, um, and uh, it's nevertheless used in practice because it tends to to work out fine most of the time. And uh, we became aware of uh, of the fact that there are models where you have this kind of catastrophic imprecision that I showed in the beginning. It's in a paper by Haddad and Montmarche. Um, and this is the Markov chain that was used to produce the results uh, at the first slides. And you want to, re you want to calculate the, uh, the probability of reaching the zero state here. And um, so uh, the, the value iteration would start with uh, assigning a one to this state because there we are done, we are in the goal. And then the probabilities get uh, pushed back to the front um, along this, uh, this queue there at the top, uh, but they get smaller and smaller and smaller. And once they've reached the, the initial state, they get redistributed to all the other states in the queue. So you get a small increment in, in these ones. And then this continues, uh, those get redistributed to the front, and yeah, you get this, this kind of mixing. And um, the problem here is that all the different yeah, th all the differences in each step can be very, very small, but in the end, they nevertheless sum up to uh, one half, because the only way to basically to lose is if this transition is taken. Otherwise, you have always have the chance to get back and still reach the goal. So the probability, the overall probability is one half. Um, in the paper, we show that not that surprisingly um, expected reward computations are similarly affected, so you can also get uh, this catastrophic imprecision. Um, and uh, Haddad and Momash uh, proposed a solution to that, and this is uh, interval iteration. This is for, uh, th they proposed that for Markov chains and MDP probability computations. So the idea is you do the usual value iteration from below, and you do another one at the same time or par in parallel from the top, from above. And you start with lower and upper bounds. And for probabilities that simple, you have a lower bound of zero and an upper bound of one. And after each iteration, the vector below is again a lower bound, and the vector above is still an upper bound. So now we can um, get some precision during the uh, termination check because we can just uh, compare between above and below. And if this is sufficiently precise, we're happy and we get a. Uh, 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 a solution that is, uh, yeah, su sufficiently uh, precise. Um, this is what this looks like. So you have the upper uh, value iteration also converging on the same uh, on the same value. Um, as Haddad and Momash point out, is that for uh, Pmax computations, uh, you also have to do some preprocessing. So basically, you have to remove or collapse all the maximal end components because otherwise the uh, iteration from above can get stuck in some values that are too high. Um, uh, what we did in the paper um, is uh, extend uh, the iteration, uh, the interval iteration approach to uh, expected uh, reward uh, computation uh, until reaching a goal. And, and there the crucial difficulty is coming up with upper bounds. So we have to start the upper iteration somewhere, and we have to come up with upper bounds. And that's not really um, evident how to do that at the beginning. Um, we assume here that, uh, uh, so now we are looking for an upper bound for uh, Emacs. Um, and uh, we assume that the MDP is contracting, so that, uh, all, uh, that uh, almost surely everything uh, in the uh, that almost surely uh, you will end up in the gold state. Um, and uh, so we need to initialize the solution vector from above with some upper bound that is larger than Emacs. And uh, to do this, uh, we use this, the following trick that uh, we 
use an upper bound on the expected number of visits to a state t under any scheduler before it reaches goal. And then we can just um, multiply this with a reward for this state and uh, do the sum and get some, some upper bound. And um, we can do this by um, providing an upper bound for the probability starting from s to go to, to, to reaching t and um, providing an upper bound on the recurrence probability. So I'm in state t and I want to know what's the probability of going back to t. And we know because it's contracting that this has to be less than one. Um, we want to get rid of this pair S, uh, ST pair because that uh, would require more computation, so we just replace it with one. We know that's a proper upper bound for probabili probabilities. Um, and for the uh, recurrence probability, we propose two uh, graph-based algorithms uh, just to, to estimate and uh, get some upper bound on the recurrence probabilities. Um, we also show that this can be used to get upper and lower bounds when we use weights, so if you have also negative rewards. Um, and clearly any upper bound for Emax is also an upper bound for Emin, so uh, that's, uh, that can be used as well. Um, and additionally, there's for, for, for uh, DTMCs and for uh, EMIN with rewards, so no negative rewards, uh, we can also use a Dijkstra sweep for monotone pessimisti pessimistic initialization uh, algorithm um, from the boundless real-time dynamic programming approach as another method of obtaining upper bounds. Um, we've implemented all of that in uh, PRISM. Uh, it's in the current release, and uh, we've also shown in the paper um, how to adapt um, topological value iteration to topological interval iteration. Um, let me give you some, uh, so we did some, some experiments. And the first thing we were curious about was, okay, how is the um, accuracy of value iteration in practice? Um, and uh, we used um, uh, the PRISM benchmark suit, and we compared the results uh, with exact resu uh, um, results if we, uh, if we have them, which is the case for about half of the computations, um, and uh, if we don't have it with the results of the interval iteration. And as you can see here, um, with uh, an epsilon of 10 to the power of minus 6, um, you would expect to get a precision of six digits, and but, but you get for, for several models you get less. But it's not that catastrophic as, uh, as for the for the artificial model. Um, for uh, expectation, it gets worse, and I, I'd like to show you one of the, the most extreme examples. And there, the result is uh, 3,267, and the absolute. Um, uh, termination check uh, leads to, to a result where only the first two fractions are correct, and you would, you would expect six to be correct. And with the relative uh, check, this imprecision is magnified and you get something that is off by, by, uh, by five. Um, with interval iteration, you get the results that you'd expect, like here six zeros and here uh, in the relative mode you get six digits overall that are correct. Um, we also, so, so this gives an indication why, why it has been, like this termination check has been used because, well, there are some imprecision, but it's not that catastrophic. Um, however, in independent work, we, in our group, we, we also uh, stumbled upon a, a model, um, a natural model that uh, exhibited this catastrophic uh, imprecision with value iteration. Um, then I just want to give you a brief uh, highlight, uh, as a, a brief overview over um, the impact on performance because you do more work. You, you do the, the two uh, iterations and you also do, uh, you potentially do a lot of more, more iterations because you have to achieves the, the precise result, the more precise result. And what we see for probabilities is that the increase in number of uh, iterations for the PRISM benchmark suit models is mostly benign. Uh, we get something like a factor of uh, up to 2.5 in the worst case. 
and the increase in the overall model checking time in the worst case is also just four, a uh, factor of four. For expectations, we see that for um, DTMC expectations and EMIN, uh, the Dijkstra sweep algorithm, uh, the, the bounds obtained by Dijkstra sweep algorithm is uh, uh, sig often significantly better than what we uh, have uh, for, for the uh, Emacs upper bounds, but um, we also see that, that most of the time, starting with a really large upper bound, does has li limited impact in the benchmark suite, but might be the case that this is uh, not the case for all the models. Like you start with 100 million, an upper bound of 100 million, and the real result is uh, a thousand, and it doesn't have that much of an impact. And there we get an increase in the number of iterations with up to a factor of five, and uh, an increase in overall model checking time, mostly factor two to four, but for some, single digit second running times, you get some uh, larger factor. Um, but I, I think what, what's important here is that interval iteration offers you the possibility to, to, to say, okay, I don't want six digits. I'm, I'm normally, I'm fine with just having two fractional digits or something, as long as I know that they are close. And uh, so, so you have a lot more, in, in practice, you can, you can tune how much uh, effort you want to spend. So uh, thanks for your attention. Questions? Yeah. <laughs> Just shout. <laughs> I repeat it. <laughs> Well, that's basically what's what's here. So, so the, it's not wrong. It's just imprecise. So, so here you have these instances in the benchmark suit that are, yeah, okay, where where some of the uh, digits are wrong, and then you have to spend a lot uh, more effort to get those right as well. So that's the uh, number of in the, the increase that you that you get. Mm -hmm. Uh, not yet, but uh, this is. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, it's just if you if you uh, have a threshold question, so you ask, uh, is a probability larger than uh, zero point two? Then uh, you can use the additional information that you get about the low and upper bounds to terminate early to to say just okay, now I'm definitely above the, uh, the, the threshold bound, and he asked if we already considered that. Um, so this is one of the next steps we'd like to implement, but uh, so, so this is mostly a technical thing that you have to accurately track the knowledge about the threshold uh, due into the nested formulas and everything to, 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 to get it right, because there's also a, the potential to get it wrong if, if you miss up some of the mod, uh, formula transformations. So, uh, we want to be a bit careful there, and uh, yeah, but that 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 definitely has potential. Thank you. Let's turn the speaker again. <laughs>